with uh, producer Susie, sister Susie in the saloon bar, making sure we get how many out of ten today? Uh, ten out of ten. Ten oh. out of ten, that's very good. And a surprise, I think. Yeah. Uh, what's our drink mm-hmm. of the day, please? Uh, well, it's Tuesday, so uh, if you don't fancy a wine like we had yesterday, then maybe a gin and tonic. Oh, <laughs> gin and tonic. Well. Yeah. Okay, what gin are we going to with? Um, I quite like a Scottish gin called Caroon. Okay, we'll go with that. Thank you very much indeed. So, uh, whilst we're enjoying that, always drink responsibly, here is today's confession, uh, which comes from Bobby Boris Cryptkicker. (laughs) Uh, And we're getting into the October spooky uh, groove. Oh, are we? Yes. Dear Apparitional Abbot and the Frightful Friars, I'm pretty sure that the Statue of Limitations has long since passed on my confession, having taken place in the mid to late 90s. Let me tell you, Bobby Boris Cryptkicker, a lot of confessions go back a lot further than that, and they are not forgiven. It was All Hallows' Eve in the year of our Lord, 1998 or thereabouts. Uh, A tradition uh, had developed round our way of taking our kids and their friends along a nearby tree-lined lane that led to an empty and rather creepy abandoned farmhouse. It must have been quite imposing Mm -hmm. once upon a time, but now it was just a collapsed ruin. The outside walls were barely intact, crumbling interior walls, creaky floorboards were still there, tons of dust and cobwebs, and an impossible-to-climb wreckage of a staircase. Don't go up there, kids, I would always say. (laughs) The kids were all dressed in horror-related costumes, rustled up any torches that they could find, and off we went. My wife and I told stories of the horrid old farmer, his scary wife and their ghostly family who had been eaten by a demonic horse called Patsy during the Dark Ages. It's a very specific story. Followed by their mysterious disappearance. Uh, this kind of thing happened a lot in the Dark Ages, I explained. Yeah, all the time. Much screaming and terror ensued, as you can imagine. But this year, an opportunity for further fun and fright presented itself. One of the girl's father had returned from work in his domestic appliance repair van just as we neared the end of our lane. So we all thought it would be a wizard wheeze to jump out and scare him. I thought I'd add a little extra drama by borrowing my son's Halloween mask. Oh. I imagine this is like a Halloween from the movie Halloween. Yes. Mm-hmm. Instantly I was transformed into something spawned in the very bowels of Mordor. <laughs> oh, it's oh. Like now... <laughs> Mr. Yeatman, no, come on. My Lord of the Rings voice is not the same no, as the Virgin. Lord of the Rings. Or the Vicar. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was Mordor. The very bowels of Mordor. Come on. What? By a phone, Kirk. <laughs> now, I could have just crept up and gone boo, or I could have banged menacingly on the side of the van. But no, I chose to open the van door and launch myself into the cab with a blood-curdling scream. <laughs> This had a rather <laughs> profound effect effect on the occupants, surprisingly, as a rather large gentleman leapt across the cabin with surprising athleticism into the arms of his passenger, who was himself scrambling to escape while screaming like a baby. You see, this wasn't my friend and neighbour at all, as you might have guessed, but two of his colleagues, who had turned up in an identical van to collect a door seal for a Zanussi. <laughs> How was I to know? On tonight of all nights. (laughs) As the dust settled, my slightly less than heartfelt apology was not particularly well received by these two complete strangers. Possibly, I think they were antagonised by my laughter. I was, in fact, holding my sides and crying at the time. So, Father Simon, I seek not forgiveness from the kids who had the, quotes, best Halloween ever, nor from my neighbour who no doubt had to put up with his colleagues' abuse. I don't even ask forgiveness from the two unknown domestic appliance engineers because, quite frankly, what use will they be in a zombie apocalypse? I mean, if you're going to judge everybody by that standard, (laughs) what use is anyone, really? No, Father Simon, I seek forgiveness from the long-suffering and fragrant Mrs. Cripkicker, who, for several days thereafter, had to put up with me bursting into bouts of spontaneous uncontrollable laughter at all hours of the time and day of the day and night uh, all the while sporting the it wasn't that funny face <laughs> <laughs> and we all know what face yeah. that looks like many spectral salutations team your ever humble disciple bobby boris crypt kicker um uh, very good um, good fame, yeah well actually nice. i thought that was one of my, that was one of my favorites come on <laughs> that worked so, uh, Sister Susie uh, goes first. I mean, this appears reckless in the extreme, I think. 
Well, I hate scary things. I just hate scary things. I don't like scary movies. I'm just too invested. I get too scared. And then I think about it for ages afterwards. So I just don't like what you've done anyway, Bobby, Boris, a crip kicker. And also, scaring people is never going to go well because you either really scare them and that's not very nice or it's not the people who you thought it was, which has happened in this instance, and they're really scared as well. Even more scared because they don't even know you. And I feel sorry for Mrs. Crip kicker because, you know... She's you married to Mr. Like, Crip kicker. Because yeah, <laughs> she's married to you, yeah. Just silly. Don't forgive you. Not very nice. Okay. I mean, it's... it's it, you, And also judging someone as to whether there'd be any use in a zombie apocalypse. Who wouldn't be any use? <laughs> I think I'd be very good. Would you? Just a hunch. You've got a um, flamethrower. Yes, I've got all of them. Um, so, I mean, things could have gone a lot worse here, couldn't they, really? I mean, I, I How? really... Uh, well, you know, I mean, the demonic horse, for one, that could have really turned things around. Called Patsy. I think, called Patsy, in, in, in <laughs> fact. And, and what are the chances that there are going to be uh, two guys turning up in a van that's exactly the same as the other van? Uh, no, it's a, work it's van. a perfectly legitimate uh, mistake to make. Uh, not uh, quite so easy for the guys from Zanussi. Uh, so, for that reason, I choose to forgive. See ya. Okay.